Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. Today is time to learn another command, and we're going to learn a very unique command. Literally, we're going to learn the unique command in this video. And the unique command is very helpful, especially for system administrators. If you've ever dealt with log files before, you know how big they can be, and you could use the unique command to remove duplicates from a file, including log files. That way, you can get down to the results that you actually care about without having to sort through a bunch of duplicated lines. And you're going to see the unique command in action in today's video. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to add it to your tool set. And this video is part of the Linux Crash Course series, which is now the longest running tutorial series in the history of this channel. There's over 80 episodes within this series, but thankfully you can watch them in any order. So that way you could consume the content that you care about. So if there's a command that you're interested in or a topic that you're curious about, there's probably a video for that. And we'll get into the content very shortly, but first I just wanted to remind you to become a channel member. By doing so, you'll get access to ad-free content as well as early access to select videos. It's a great way to support Linux learning, and now I'd really appreciate it if you became a member. All you have to do is click the join button below this video to become a member, and I really hope that you do. I hope you join the Learn Linux TV team because in this community we love to learn Linux and your support helps me teach you Linux. So it's a win-win. So definitely consider becoming a channel member. I would really appreciate it. Anyway, it's time to dive in. So let's learn the unique command right now. First, we're going to start with some very basic examples so you can see exactly how the unique command works. In the next section, I'll give you some helpful real-world examples you can actually use, but before that, we should understand the basic usage of this command. Like I mentioned during the intro, the unique command is primarily used to remove duplicated lines. And to see it in action, what I'm going to do is paste a command on the screen right now that will produce actual duplicated lines. And here's the command. And this is just the echo command. We haven't actually gotten to the unique command just yet, but I wanted to show you an example with duplications and that's exactly what this command will produce. With this command, I'm simply printing a list of some of my favorite desktop environments. If you're curious, the dash E option of the echo command enables it to parse backslash escapes. And that's how I was able to use slash N to add a new line after every item. As you can see, there's some duplicated entries here. And sure, I created those duplications on purpose, but again, we'll see more useful examples later. Anyway, watch what happens when I pipe the output of the previous command into the unique command. So I'll recall the previous command, and then what I'll do is redirect it into the unique command. And as you can see, the duplicated lines are gone. And even though this example was a bit contrived, the most common usage of the unique command is going to be using it with other commands. And the way the command breaks down is we use the echo command to print a list of desktop environments with duplications. But once we redirect the output into the unique command, the duplicated lines are gone. Before we go any further though, there is a common gotcha with the unique command that may confuse newcomers. And to illustrate that, I'll give you another example of the echo command. In this case, we also have duplicated lines, as you can see from the output. And the only difference with this echo command compared to the previous one is that I just changed things around a bit. As you can see, we still have duplicated lines, but they're in different places. But watch what happens when I pipe this command into the unique command. In this case, it doesn't appear as though the unique command is working at all. The duplicated entries are still present, even after piping the echo command into unique. So why is it that the first example worked, but the second one doesn't? Well, the reason is due to a very important distinction. The unique command removes sequential duplicates. In the example I just gave you, all I did was change the order of the individual items, and I made sure that the duplicated lines were not in order. And as a result of that, the unique command did, well, nothing. However, this situation is actually pretty simple to fix. We could sort the entries first and then pipe the output into unique. So I'll clear the screen. I'll recall the previous command so that way you can see the difference immediately. And now what I'll do is change it around a little bit. So instead of piping the output directly into unique, what I'm going to do instead is first pipe it into the sort command. So here, what I'm doing is I'm piping the output of the echo command first into sort, and that's going to sort the entries alphabetically. After that, I'm going to pipe the output of the sort command into unique. So when I press enter, you'll see that the duplicated lines are gone. 
And in case you're curious, what I'll do is recall the previous command, but I'll remove the unique command from the mix, and you'll see what the sort command does immediately. As you can see, it alphabetized the list, so once I pipe the output of this into unique, then it met the criteria for sequential duplicates. Then it was able to remove those duplicated lines. However, most of the time when you use the unique command, you're going to be using it against files. After all, I could have fixed my earlier examples a lot easier by simply not typing duplicates in the first place. Files, on the other hand, will often have duplicated lines, especially log files. We'll look at log files later, but for now, I've prepared a couple of text files that I'll use for a few more quick examples. If I list the storage of my current working directory, I have two files, and both of these contain a list of Linux distros. And we'll start with list number one. Let's go ahead and see what's inside that file. As you can see, I have a list of distributions, and, well, there's some duplicated lines within this file. But what we could do is pipe the output of the cat command into the unique command. So again, I'll type cat, and I'll use it against the first file. And then I'm simply going to pipe it into unique. And as you can see, the duplicated lines are now gone. Now with the second example, the list is going to be the same, but I've changed the order of the distributions. And as you can see, we have duplicated lines again, but the order is completely different. And as you already know from one of my earlier examples in this video, Unique is not going to do anything unless the duplicated lines are sequential. So if I recall the previous command and pipe it into Unique, it did absolutely nothing. But similar to our earlier example, I can also include the sort command into the chain in order to group everything together, and that'll make the Unique command able to do its job. So again, here's the original list. And now I'll pipe it into sort and then I'll pipe it into unique. And as you can see, the duplicated lines are gone. Again, there's not really all that much new when it comes to these particular examples, but since most often the unique command is used against files, I wanted you to see what that looks like. We're going to see more examples throughout the video and also some common command line options we can use. But I think it would be more fun to do so while looking through some real world examples. So that way you can get a better idea of how this command can actually help you while you manage Linux systems. So what I'll do is switch over to another terminal, and this one is going to be connected to a real server. And here I have an SSH connection that's open to the actual server that's responsible for serving the website for this channel. Now, since you won't have access to my actual server, you won't be able to follow along with me exactly, but you can use any file that you may have access to while we explore the unique command. If you need a bit of inspiration for which file to use as an example, consider log files. In fact, using the unique command with system logs is a very common use case. On my end, this particular server is using Open Lightspeed as the web server, so what I'll do right now is navigate to the directory where the log files for this server can be found. And on my end, what I'm going to do is switch to root to make sure that I have full access to the log files. And now I'm logged in as root. So what I'll do right now is change to the directory where the log files are stored on the server. Since I'm using Open Lightspeed, what I'll do is type cd and then navigate to slash usr slash local slash lsws slash logs. And here, as you can see, I have a series of log files. And among the log files in this directory, we have my access log, which shows all of the connection attempts made to my server. Unfortunately, I can't show you the contents of this file for privacy reasons, but what I can do is tell you how many lines are currently inside this file. So I'll cat the contents of the access log. And then I'm going to pipe it into the word count command, which is abbreviated down to just WC. And I'm going to use option dash L, and that's going to count the lines. So I'll press enter. And as you can see, I currently have 2,699 lines within this file. And in case you're curious, the WC command gives us a count of how many words are in a file. And when I use the dash L option, it's going to count lines instead. Now, even though I can't show you the actual contents of the access log, I can show you some of the value of the unique command, even with this. So what I'm going to do is clear the screen and I'll bring back the output from the previous command. But now what I'm going to do is pipe it into the unique command and then I'm going to pipe it into the WC command. So my completed command looks just like this. So when I press enter, you'll see that it cut the number of lines down to 1,484. So even though I didn't show you the contents of my access log, you could definitely see the value of the unique command. 
if I was going through the access log to troubleshoot something, it's a lot easier to go through the file if I have fewer lines to contend with. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I wanted to let you guys know about something really cool that I created recently. I put together the Ultimate Linux Commands Cheat Sheet, a downloadable PDF that covers all the essential Linux commands, as well as some great bash aliases, hardening tips, and other nuggets that I've picked up over the years. For just a $3 donation, it's yours, and it makes a great reference for those of you that work with a terminal. And while you're there, check out my other products at the shop as well. There's all kinds of Linux-themed products there. For example, t-shirts like the Dark Side of the Terminal, there's a classic Debian swirl tee, and even a shirt to warn those around you that you're obsessed with Linux. Every purchase helps keep this channel going. There's a lot of cost involved with editing all the content for you guys, and it also helps justify the amount of caffeine that I go through while I edit these videos. As always, thank you guys so much for supporting Linux Learning. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. And keep in mind, I saw value here even without sorting the output first. And that can only mean that this particular log file has a large number of sequential duplicates. But already, we see a really good use case when it comes to the unique command. If you're working with log files, maybe because you're troubleshooting something, you may end up in a situation where you have the same error message repeated multiple times. In order to make it easier to go through the file, removing duplicates first will give you fewer lines to go through. Even better, you could create a new copy of the log file with the duplicated lines removed. So for example, what I'll do is redirect the output into a file. I'll save it in my home directory and I'll name it access.log and I'll give it an extension deduplicated. Anyway, now that I've made a copy of my access log, if I wanted to, I could go through the copied file as I troubleshoot something, which will not only have fewer lines than the original, but my copy will persist even if the source log file was rotated, and it's always a good thing to have a backup anyway. Now, let's see another example, and this will be a great opportunity to show you some of the options that you could use with the unique command. We're going to start with the dash C option, and that's going to give you a count for how many times a particular item shows up within the file. For this example, I made another backup copy of my access log, and then I went in and changed the IP addresses that it contains with randomly generated IPs, so that way I can show you the contents of this file without actually exposing any private information. Anyway, what we're going to do in particular is pull all of the IP addresses from the file and see a count of how many times each IP address has accessed the web server. So what I'll do is paste in the command and then I'll explain exactly what it does. And here we have another command string. And again, this is going to be common when it comes to the unique command since it's most often used with other commands. And here we're starting with the cut command and that's something that I've already covered in an earlier episode within the Linux Crash Course series. In this case, we're telling the cut command to use space as a delimiter between fields, and we're specifically targeting the first field, which is going to be the IP address. The remainder of each line is going to be truncated after that. And then I'm piping the output of the cut command into the sort command, which is going to end up printing the IP addresses in sequential order. Remember, the unique command only works with sequential duplicate lines, so we're using sort to facilitate that requirement. After that, we're piping the output of that command into the unique command, but this time we're going to use the dash C option. And what that does is it'll give us a count for how many times each item shows up within the file. So let's see what that looks like. So as you can see right here, I have a list of IP addresses and some of them are accessing the server more often than others. Again, the numbers in each of these IP addresses were changed to random values. So that way you're not going to see any actual private information for anyone's IP address. But now that I have randomly changed the IPs, we can see how many times each contrived IP address has accessed the server. And as you can see, there's quite a few different IP addresses here, but I think you get the idea. Now, before I close out the video, I wanted to go over some additional options you can use with a unique command. And to keep my remaining example simple, I'm going to return to using my distro list as the example file. And as a refresher, I'll print the contents of the first list again. And here it is. And now what I'm going to do is show you the dash D option with the unique command. And what this is going to do is show us only the lines that were duplicated. So I'll type unique and then dash D. And again, I'm going to target that same file. And now it's showing only the lines that have duplicates. So that way, if you want to view only the lines that are duplicated, the dash D option will enable you to do exactly that. 
And sure, it's a simple example, but if you wanted to see only duplicated lines, well, that's how you do it. In addition to that, you could also do the exact opposite. So if I recall the previous command, but I change the option to dash u instead of dash d, watch what happens. In this case, we're seeing the lines within the file that don't have duplicates. So the dash d option will show you only the duplicated lines, and the dash u option will show you the lines that are not duplicated. Now the final option that I want to let you know about is dash i. Now the dash i option isn't something that you'll use all that often, but you never know. It may come in handy someday. Basically what it does is makes the unique command case insensitive, so capitalization won't matter anymore when it looks for duplicates. Normally, repeated messages will have the same case, so you might not use that option all that much, but it might be a good idea to include it in your notes if a need for it ever comes up. And to illustrate that, what I'll do is show you the contents of the second list. In this case, we have duplicated lines again, but the case is different between them. For example, we have Debian listed twice, with a lowercase d in one of the entries, and Arch is also listed twice, with a lowercase a and an uppercase a as well. Meanwhile, Ubuntu is duplicated, but the case is the same. Anyway, watch what happens when I use the cat command to view the contents of this file, but then I pipe it into the unique command. In this case, Arch is still showing twice, but Ubuntu is only showing once. And that's expected, because the case is the same with the second duplication of Ubuntu, but the case is different when it comes to Arch and Debian. And now, when I include the dash i option, it's going to take care of all of the duplicates regardless of their case. As you can see, it's now only showing each distribution one time. Anyway, that's about it when it comes to the unique command. It's a very simple tool by itself, but its true power comes from using it alongside other commands. In this video, we saw several examples of it in action, and there's a few more options available if you check the man page for the unique command. But for the most part, the examples that we've gone over in this video should be the majority of what you're going to need. And there's our video. In this video, we explored the unique command and I hope it helped you out. If it did, then be sure to click that like button to let YouTube know. Also, subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux. I release new content each and every week and I'd love to have you aboard. Anyway, thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.